Anderson he's over Anderson, it is, it is. And he's locked in, what a goal! Inundated, so popped in there. Hello Australian table tennis. Hello, John Murphy. My name's Simon Gerrada. My name's Simon Gerrada. I'm with John Murphy. We're at the Australian Qualification Tournament for the 2020 Olympic Games, Stage 2, Tokyo. Here we come. Welcome, John. Thanks, Simon. Some, uh, some uh, exciting matches over the next few days. All right, this match here we have Jan Feng Lei, five-time Olympian coming up against Stephanie Sang. Stephanie's an Olympian, so this is the match of the round. Um, big match first up, John. Ten, ten ladies in the group. Um, I've got to admit, the emotions start now, you know, having been involved in... Yeah, a numerous amount of Olympic qualification events as a coach and as a player. And you see the parents coming through and you see the the coaches and the, the, the brothers and the sisters and all the support crews coming in to one facility. Um, you can just see the sort of yeah, the emotion right around the room. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm probably the opposite to you, Simon. It's uh, my debut at such an event, so it's been great in the, in the lead up in the last few weeks to see the players prepare... Uh, as a team and as individuals, and um, yeah, looking forward to see who, who who eventually comes out on top. Yeah, well, two people get through. Two people will be will be selected by the Australian or nominated by the Australian Olympic uh, Committee to be in the team um, from this event. Um, just as it gets started, uh, we'll just remind you of the other matches going on. We've got uh, Michelle Bromley against the ten-year-old superstar Con Connie Psihogis, eleven-year-old now. Uh, Michelle Bromley, New South Wales. Now I will keep you up to date with that as you're watching the match there, John. Uh, table two, we've got uh, Matilda Alexanderson versus Michelle Wu, so a Queensland Victorian affair there. And on table four, we have Melissa Tapper versus Pauline Kerr. Table five, Kai Peng versus, uh, versus uh, just having a look there, uh, Tracy Feng. All matches are underway now. And a bit of a good start here for Steph. Yeah, John. I think, I think, like you said, Simon, this is not an easy one for either. Um, I don't think they would have picked this match to, to start off. If, if, uh, <laughs> but obviously, Stephanie coming through the quali qualifiers puts her up against some of the already qualified players early on. Um, and as you can see, it's 3 1 up in the first. Yeah, jumping out to a nice start here. So Stephanie's just done a, a good three-week stint in uh, China preparing for the event. I, I don't know too much about how Jan's prepared for the event. John? Yeah, I think she's just been practicing her, her usual practice. I think mm. yeah, she's been competitive all year in the international scene, so th her, her, her daily practice uh, routine uh, works for At Jan. At the end of the day, I mean, what, what are we talking? F five Olympics? We're talking mm. 25 years... Yeah, seven Commonwealth game, yeah. Games medals. Just probably still has that elusive gold medal to, to, to get, which probably is possible further down the line. She knows how to do things, eh? Absolutely, I yeah. think. Yeah. Haven't got the opportunity to work with Jan over the last 16 months, so I can see how to her, how to her she prepares for, for events and how much she thinks about the her game to, to get the best out of herself. No matter which, uh, which player it is out there, whether it's... Bromley versus Psihogis, Stephanie versus Jan Feng Lei, or even a Tapper. The nerves are nerves are alive right now. You know, like you're just trying to feel the way through the game. Um, obviously, you like to get that first set, but it's just about settling, isn't it? Yeah, I think exactly. I think we we we've spoke about it this week. I think the ones who've who've had experience in this situation. And again, the ones who've probably been successful in this situation probably probably have a little bit of an advantage uh, 
over the next few days. Mm. Absolutely. Nine matches, just to remind everyone. So it's a 10-person group. Everybody plays everybody. Um, 10 females uh, and 10 male players. As we go around the tables, Michelle Bromley now 6-6 six, six with uh, Connie Psihogis in the first set. Obviously, everyone's in the first set. We've got uh, Matilda Alexanderson 8-6 against Michelle Wu. Melissa Tapper 7-6 up against Pauline Kerr. And we have 5-4 for Kai Peng. So, yeah, some, some very tight first sets. Um, and that's that sort of nerves that they're going to be fighting through that I'm talking about. Um, a big lineup of matches ahead for us today, John. Um, I'm just going to run through what we have in the women's uh, round. We've got, obviously, the Jan Fang Lei stephanie Sang match here. Best of seven games, um, so everyone needs to know that. Best of seven all the way through. Um, then we're going to follow up uh, with the boys' match. We've got Chris Yan versus Xavier Dixon, another big match. Um, so it's a big day of entertainment. We've got a bit of a dispute here on Alette. Interesting to see the way this one goes. We've got... Uh, then we go to Melissa Tapper versus Stephanie Sang. Uh, two big matches. Having been a qualifier for Stephanie, she's got two big matches straight up. Um, then we're going over to David Powell versus Finn Lu, John. Um, I think that's the uh, that's the ultimate experience <laughs> against the ultimate new talent, and yeah, that we, we would like to see that. Mate, what a lineup today! Seriously, if you're sitting at home and you've just joined us on My Sport Live, I'm telling you, put the uh, put the pajamas on. Um, Make yourself a nice cup of tea or whatever you prefer and uh, enjoy a big day of table tennis, five hours of ac action-packed table tennis. Then we're going to go back to the women's and we'll have Michelle Bromley versus Kai Peng, an important match by that stage of the tournament. Big shot just off the edge there for Lei. Um, and then we're going to finish up the day with, with the uh, killing machine, Nicholas Lum, versus uh, everybody's favourite player in Australian table tennis, uh, Heming Hu. So it's a big day of table tennis on my sport live coming up all right so important stages john nine nine yeah i think uh, it's, it's a it's a crucial set for for stephanie here i think um i know she she was close in the first couple of sets at the oceana tour in morning in december but then jan ran out four nil winner mm. so i think the pressure really on stephanie here to to, to try take this opening game what's up into that middle. Yeah, I think got to be aggressive, right? You've yeah, got I think to be aggressive if you step. You can't just sit there and go no. to push block, push block. You've got to beat her. You've got to go with Jan Feng Lei, right? For Stephanie, anyway. And, uh, and I think it's 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 very interesting if you if you, if you watch throughout this match, Ten -ten. Jan's nice service. Point. You know, she she plays the serve different at all times. Makes mm. it difficult. Mm. Well, I'm going to go around the tables while we're at 10-10 because some interesting movements happen. Um, obviously, the nerves at the start of the match. Everyone's a bit nervous and it was tied in that Bromley versus Connie match, Connie Psihogas. Uh, Bromley takes that one out 11-6. Um, another interesting one was uh, Matilda Alexanderson ended up losing that first set to Michelle Wu. Tapper took out the first set against uh, Pauline Kerr 11-6 in the end. And we see Kai Peng, I believe, won the first set against uh, Tracy John. Yep, that's correct. As we have a set ball here for Stephanie, and she takes the first set. Nice nerve settler, Mr. Murphy. Absolutely. As we go to a break. I'll make a little correction there. Uh, Tracy Feng won the first set against Kai Peng. They switched ends on me and I didn't really notice. There's five tables happening. It's action packed here and I'm struggling to keep up. Obviously. Not unusual for you, Simon. To keep so. up. Thanks, John. Nice vote of support as our uh, CEO, Scott Houston of Table Tennis Australia, looks over and. <laughs> Go 
Got to lift that up. Got to lift that up, Steffi. I mean, once you get through this one, John, the Steph and uh, Jan Fang Lei, the winner, the winner's on their way. The winner's, winner's on their way. They're saying, okay, beautiful, great first win. Potentially one of the hardest players in the draw to beat, either way. And off you go, right? Yeah, uh, I feel it's, it's, it's probably more of a crucial victory for, for Stephanie. As she, yeah, you're as right, she, actually, yeah. She, you know, as she goes straight, straight into another main competitor to, to try and qualify in, in Melissa in the next round. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to go in there knowing you could be 2-0 or 0-2. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're 100% right there, mate. Yeah. Whereas Jan, I mean, I just can't see her losing too many, to be honest. Uh, like, yeah, she's just such a class table tennis player over the years. I mean, it was only months ago that she, she went 4-3 at the World Cup and won her first match, wasn't it? Uh, she lost 4-3 to Petty Solius, yeah, 19 in the world. <laughs> Say so no more. Yeah. How's the nerves there, John? I feel like you're 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 finding it a little bit nerve-wracking at the moment. Not your usual bubbly self. Yeah, I probably feel the feel the pressure for all the players. Uh, for me, it's it's not the nerves of who will qualify, but it's probably the nerves for all the players as we as we work closely with them all. So mm. you know, we probably we feel how they feel. Okay, so um, any any questions along the day, along the way, over the weekend, uh, feel free to just ask them on our social media site, uh, on to Table Tennis Australia's Facebook page. Um, we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, so just around the tables... Um, as we see, Jan go to 5-3. Bromley, 8-6-1-0 versus Sihogis. Michelle Wu, 7-5-1-0 versus Matilda Alexanderson. Uh, Tracy Feng, 9-3-1-0 against Kai Peng. Melissa Tapper, 2-0 against Pauline Kerr. Um, so, yeah, I welcome everybody. Um, thank you for your well wishes, Mr. Stuart Walsh. Um, thank you very much. Nice to see that you're watching Stu and hopefully you enjoy the day. Uh, so so the, the event's been held at Croydon Table Tennis Association. Plenty of parking, uh, plenty of room. Come on down. It's a good down line ball, wasn't it? Moving the ball around from Steph. Yeah, I think beautiful we, play. Yeah, it's probably one of Stephanie's biggest strengths that she that she plays both backhand and forehand down the line quite often which is very difficult for the opponent to... She's on you too, you know. She stays close and she, she just holds that bat up saying, you're hitting it to my backhand. <laughs> that doesn't she, you know? Like, I feel like there's that message. She anticipates very well. But that's through her previous shot. She hits it to a spot knowing that you can only hit it back here if I catch her. But even in that last point, you saw she switched from the forehand to the backhand. She, she wasn't the, the greatest shot, but she still made it happen. Exchange there between Jan and Stephanie, and Jan just a little bit more safer in the rally. We've got a set ball for Alexanderson against Wu to level that one up one all. Bromley's now 2 0 against Sihogis. Oh. <laughs> Alexanderson goes 1 1 with Wu. Good spin on Jan's first ball there. I think she she changed from previously she'd been trying to open up with the with the pimples and she changed there to open up with the live mm -hmm. and got a lot of spin and Stephanie blocked out. Again back to opening up with the pips and so just you'll see those small changes from from Jan throughout the game. Constantly changing, yeah.
There we have it, 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. All right, as we come back for the second, third set, 1-1. One, one. I was about to talk about uh, how sort of there's so far to go in the tournament. You win that first set, you're so nervous. Um, but very quickly you're reminded that there's still an extra eight matches after this to go. And, you know, you've just got to pace yourself in these events and you've got to be strong-willed and strong-minded, uh, strong able to deal with the adversities of a loss or, you know, a couple of sets down and find a way through. Um, yeah. Absolutely, and I think... You know, I think it's it's not just yourself, but you know your coach behind you as well, oh, yeah. who who will who will guide you and and you know when you when you're in those tough situations, we'll be able to uh, support you and help you make the right decision. Yeah, that part part it's a partnership out there. It's it's a nine match partnership, and obviously they've been working with their coaches yeah. and advisors in the in the lead up to it. But it's such a partnership, and you know we were seeing sort of these partnerships. Some of them were formed. You know, three months ago, take Heming Hu with Russell Lavo. Um, that started so far back for this event. Um, whereas some of them, you know, just reignite because they've done it together. Um, in, you know, Melissa with Patrick Wirtz, as an example, Tapper. Um, that, that started, you know, just a couple of days ago. Um, several phone meetings over the, over, the, over the period to just keep up to date with, with the uh, training program, etc. So, yeah, it's, it's a partnership out there and it doesn't just start today. Oh, and I think I think you'll you'll see everything out there this weekend. I think you'll see the the player without a coach. Yeah. You'll see the player with their friend in, the, in a, or just a, a confident advisor. You'll mm. see the the club, the club coach, the yeah. parent, yeah. and you know you'll see the professional coach mm. and the one who's in to do a job. Mm. And some good coaches out there, from what I can see, Simon. You've been involved on the floor. Mm. Um, some familiar phases for you, I'm sure. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, it does range from uh, professional co coaches, club co coaches, confidants, etc. Um, you got, as I said, Patrick Wirtz, Queensland German background table tennis, working with Melissa Tapper, um, and Pauline Kerr on uh, her opponent for this round. Uh, has Michael Mosh from Monaco from the Dandenong table tennis. Um, just looking around, you got Frank Rodriguez, French background table tennis. He's working with. Um, He's working with uh, Matilda Alexanderson. Uh, Stephanie Sang in this match has uh, her husband, who is a table tennis background, same club in Harbin, China. Uh, that's how they met. Um, Jan Feng Lei's gone with Warren Wilcock. He's he's uh, a club level player. Pimples both side. I think sometimes it's a bit educational for him in the in the bench, uh, but at the same time, uh, it's more just. I think in that sense, it's Jan just having somebody to vent to or to observe and, and just give a, a general thought maybe. It wouldn't be too deep, I, I would imagine, John. Um, but, I mean, at the same time, when you when you talk coaching for Jan Feng Lei, it is just sort of advice in terms of perhaps or she, she takes her, takes care of her own business, right? I think I think coaching a player like that with su such, a, such experience and I've had the pleasure of doing it a number mm. of times this year, I think it's to try keep her calm, to try keep her thinking clearly and I think she has her own system, she has her own game, yeah. she's probably the most experienced person from table tennis in the whole room, mm. coaches and players mm. included, mm. so I mean mm. I think she knows what you're doing but it's like you said, what works for her is having someone to just keep her calm and, 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 and say the right words at the right time. Mm. 
Um, so looking around the room, uh, Connie Psihogas, so our 11-year-old superstar. She has uh, Michael Mostra Monaco from the Dandenong Club. Um, Michelle Wu, Meow Meow. Um, yeah, again, Meow, uh, another one, very few with more experience than, than Meow in the table tennis uh, scene, both as a player and a coach. And I think that's a, that's a, that will, that will stand to, I think, Michelle, especially with the game that Michelle is trying to play. And I think Meow will be across that throughout the event. And I think she will be hard to beat for a lot of players uh, over the next few days. Uh, final tables, the two New South Wales ladies, Kai Peng and uh, Tracy Feng. Whether it's a, a sort of in-house match and there's no coaches, or whether they're just opting for the no bench throughout the tournament, I'm not sure, but that match there, they don't have any benches. Great ball from Stephanie, wide to the, wide to the back end. Yes. Well, this one doesn't look like a runaway victory for Jan here. No, by and, any I, no and I never, I never thought it would be, mm. I think. I think they played also in the early stages of the national championships this year, and mm. I think it was 4-2. You know, it was a it was a tough match. They obviously jammed it on to get to the final, but um, yeah, it's it, of course this 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 was for sure. Uh, I don't think we had any uh, doubts that this would be the the live stream table. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, around around the tables, uh, Tracy Fing three zero three two. Melissa Tapper 3057 versus Pauline Kerr. Michelle Bromley now 9330 against Connie Psihogis and Michelle Wu leads 2 1 Love All against Matilda Alexanderson. Eight now, and Stephanie had a chance to to give herself a, a match ball or a set ball. Sorry. It looks like a simple mistake, but really she's going for that white line, and she just misread the spin by a fraction, which was crea created by herself and Jan's pimple play. Yeah, I think. Jan is getting various lengths when she plays with the pips, and, mm. and it's it's hard to, to judge the, the 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 length of that one. Ooh. Steph's mixing it up a lot to herself, isn't she? She's not she's not just doing the same thing over and over again, not playing no, for the same spots. Absolutely, has a game plan, and she's sticking to that. Mm. Two one for Stephanie. All right, 2-1, Stephanie Sang to blow the tournament wide open. This could be a, a headline story in round one, Murph. Uh, absolutely, I think uh, very just 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 watching watching both in the in the in the coaching break, and Stephanie is very focused, uh, getting good advice, and really really looking like she's uh, ready to, to to spring this surprise. Okay, just getting some results through to you. <coughs> a couple of matches. In addition to the Michelle Beaumont matches finished, uh, 
Kaiping 0-4 against Tracy Fang. Um, that's that's according to seeding, John. Yeah, it is, but um, probably wouldn't have had it down as a 4-0. I think uh, mm. Kai is a, a dangerous, dangerous player, and I probably would have thought that that would be a little bit closer, but obviously Tracy in good shape and, and got the job done. Tapper 4-0 versus Pauline Kerr. Yeah, again, that's a, that's a good result for for Melissa. I think, uh, yeah, Parleen, we would we would uh, as our number one junior player, yeah, we would be hoping to see some 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 good performances over the next few days. And mm. I think she'll be disappointed with a with a zero four loss there against Melissa. Comparative to the boys, I mean, that's a good point you make. We got them coming on soon. Mm. Um, Finn Lou, Nick Lum, the two junior boys in the uh, top ten for this shootout. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on the juniors' progress. Yeah, right? I think for 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 the four juniors, two girls and two boys that are that are in the event, I think one it acts as ex experience, and two uh, it acts as a, as a chance to beat the, the, mm. the top guys. It's a great 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 opportunity for them, isn't it? And we, yeah. This is an interesting lead again for Stephanie. Simon, how, how would you think? And, uh, and uh, it's interesting because we spoke about it. Uh, we spoke about it in, uh, in MSAC at stage one of the trials, and we said at that stage that Stephanie would have some advantage having <laughs> having played that trials coming into this event because she'd already started the path to, to try qualify for Tokyo. And I think what we were saying there is is, is really coming back to, 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 to prove us right. Yeah, um, I, I think obviously experience, that's a big one. I think that uh, Stephanie's run into this event has been somewhat timed, let's call it. Um, she had a long break from the game freshened up the mind, freshened up the lifestyle around table tennis. I mean, bottom line, Stephanie put a good 20 years of her life to table tennis before taking a little little break. You know, from eight years old in China, playing, you know, four or five days a week, and then at 12 years old, 11 years old, then moving through to the main stage and training twice a day, six days, seven days a week for the next 10 years. Um, I think that she looks fresh for me her program's been fresh, it's been energised, she's been putting in, she's been putting in with reason rather than just training. Um, obviously the qualifying does help, but I then think that the entry into the uh, entry into that Oceana Cup event, as we were getting closer, where she played Jan, she played the likes of Melissa, I think that that then proved a nice, uh, let's call it a nice, uh, a timely assessment of her game. Yeah, I think I think the the, the one thing I'll add to that mm. I I I complete, uh, completely agree would be probably the enjoyment factor I've yeah. seen Stephanie getting out yeah. of practice. Yeah. You know, I think she she's uh, she seems to be a player who's enjoying her table tennis. Yeah, exactly. And then everything rolls from there, right? I mean, you start you start planning a little bit better, and you're you're willing to make some changes and discuss things a little bit more because you're enjoying the whole game of table tennis. Um, in saying that, we're, we're now seeing Jan get nine five. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's, it's a long way to it's go. It's a long, it's a long, it's a long, um, long match, and it's difficult to, to, to get four sets on the board against Jiang Fangli. And I think that'll be the story of the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's who can get those four sets every single time, and we've talked about it in the men's draw leading into the event about Henning's heart and fight. Um, uh, ab absolutely, I think. Yeah, we've, you know, I think the. Both Hemming and Jan as probably favourites, are favourites for <coughs> not only their talent for table tennis, but their talent to win. Mm. And they're, they've shown that over the last year. Uh, obviously, Jan a lot more than that. But 
I think I think it's um, yeah, it will be the one with the with the biggest fight that will will get over the line. We'll have a little break. Yeah, and they're, uh, back to that conversation, they're all going to be challenged over the week and and it's hard to put a weighting on on what that sort of, uh, having gone through those experiences and, you know, they, you know, Jan's obviously done it nine times, five in the Olympic trials and four in Com Games. It's hard to put a weighting on it, but it's, it's a massive weighting, you know, like you know that she's going to front up for nine matches and give it everything and if it takes four, three, nine times, she's going to go for it, she, she'll do it. Whereas, you know, the younger, inexperienced player, by three or four, seven set losses, might end up finding it difficult. And I suppose that's why we're here, and <coughs> we'll probably see that a little bit in the, in the men's mm. uh, next round, in that, you know, there is a lot of young pretenders there, ready to, ready to step up, and I think probably half the field are, 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 are under 22. Just a reminder of matches to come. We've got uh, Chrissy Ann versus Xavier Dixon next up. Melissa Tapper, Stephanie Sang, David Powell, Nick, Finn Lum, Finn Lu, Michelle Bromley, Kai Peng, and then Nick Lum versus Heming Hu. I think in this in this in this type of uh, competition, uh, I think uh, Stephanie and Jan will be delighted to see the back of each other when this match is over and let them get on with the rest of the tournament. Um, as we can see, it's a very close match, and I can see this going down to the wire. Just don't think Jan's that comfortable at that in general. Yeah, I think... I, 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 she's obviously trying to find her game at this stage. Yeah, f uh, my, my feeling for Jan is that I think she's in very good shape. I think she's played very good, probably as good as she has played for a number of years in the last uh, 2019. And I think, you know, from, from seeing and speaking and practicing with her, I think, you know, Tokyo is a massive goal for her. I think, you know, to play in the six Olympics, but not only to play, but probably to try to have a a good performance there so i think that shows when you're when you're trying to qualify that you know there is the pressure there it is difficult okay so we've got two two with matilda alexanderson and michelle wu uh, just to recap some results, if you're just joining us, Melissa Tapper defeated Pauline Kerr 4-0, Michelle Bromley defeated Connie Psihogas 4-0, and Tracy Feng defeated Kai Peng 4-0. Uh, got a question on social media, so yeah, we've, we've answered that question earlier, but we'll, uh, it's a good point. We'll try and just keep reminding people throughout the event how many people will make it to Tokyo for Australia. Uh, William Poplowski's asked. So two of the athletes in male and two of the athletes in female in this event this week will uh, earn their right for selection uh, or nomination to the Olympics. Um, and then they'll be joined by one more athlete. John? Yeah, so, so, the, so the two players that come out of the respective categories here, um, men and women events, will, will qualify for the singles event. Uh, and will be part of the Australian team for the team event and the third spot 
will come from either uh, a qualified mixed doubles pairing at the Oceana Olympic mixed doubles uh, competition on the 19th and 20th of April, or by selection, if, if not from that situation. So there's still a lot to be played out. Thanks for joining us, William Poplowski. All right, so we're three two. Stephanie saying one set away from causing a, a big first round upset here, John. But it gets real now. This is where, it, in a way, it sort of gets real. You play a little bit safer if you're Jan. You don't. You're not trying. You're just using what what works. And then from a Stephanie point of view, maybe sometimes. You know, you overdo it a little bit because you're trying to finish it out. Uh, maybe you, you, you play too safe because you, you just think you you just need to keep it in and the other lady might let me have it almost, you know. So it, it, the tricky, tricky part of the match begins now. I suppose we discussed, you know, we discussed Stephanie and and her her path back into the national squad i mean and i think that 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 was a it was a good indication of of how to do it and and mm -hmm. how to come back to try player best but i i often feel in these situations it is the player who's been grinding out for 20 years playing international competitions year in year out that gets through these situations more often and i'll be interested to see if if, if jan can draw on that and 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 tried to get over the line, but Stephanie is clearly in control here. Time out, call by Jan Hang Lay. One, four, two, three. Stephanie Sang on her way to recording possibly the biggest first round upset in recent Olympic qualification. We'll be back soon. I hope you're back in your seat. It's about to get real. 4-1, 3-2, Stephanie, Jan Feng Lei serving. Good timeout call, though, there from Jan, though. She'd, she'd almost just lost the plot, plot there a, a little bit. It's getting a bit frustrated, and she was in another space. Very good from Stephanie. Smart game, yeah. I think passive, passive, uh, passive game is is, is is probably the best in the hall. Uh, I think you have to be very smart on where you place the ball and what speed you give to Stephanie because she just is on every ball in that in that situation.
the era. It's gonna take something special, I believe. I think. Oh, this one's over, John. I don't know. Maybe I think. Not. I think. Uh, I think you can. You can never write the match off, and I, I think. Jan would have found herself in the in in Stephanie's position in the Australian Open when she was three 0 up, eight three up. So she knows she has the 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 opposite side uh, and experience this year. But like you said, I think Stephanie clearly in 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 cruise control here. I mean, I've been biting my tongue. Jan's just not playing well enough at the moment. I'm not saying she's not going to at some point but this is not the jam that we've seen no for the last 20 years i mean this is way off her best and whether it's the nerves or the hall or whatever it is or the stephanie's game game plan this is a yeah an, an interesting match in my eyes well Seven match balls. There it is. It's Stephanie Wang Sang wins the first round match against Jan Feng Lei. We'll be back with Xavier Dixon versus Chris Yan soon. Thanks a lot. Get over him, it is, it is. And he's locked in for one! 